XRP, XRP, XRP. The Bulls are getting ready to run out the gates, family. Can't you feel it? Hi, Vibe Assets. Welcome back to today's show. I got a good one for you today. You know every time that you click on this channel, the content is going to be bullish. Go ahead and give me a follow on my Twitter page at High Vibe Assets. Without further ado, let's go ahead and kick off today's show. Right after those Bill Hinman emails, I told everybody that cryptocurrency would never be the same, especially in the United States, because what the Bill Hinman emails did, it put everything on front street, you know? Judge Annalisa Torres in Ripple essentially been having those Bill Hinman emails for about eight months now, but the judge was very imperative that the public needs to see the shamefulness of the behaviors of the representative of the SEC and these governmental agencies, Bill Hinman, Jay Clayton, Goldman, Gary, Mr. Burns, Hester Peirce, Crypto Mom, everybody at the SEC regime has been put on front street. The Hinman disposition emails lying under oath, blatantly lying under oath about XRP, about Ethereum, causing deliberate confusion in the market to give regulatory passes to these digital assets. Oh my goodness, I told everyone. After these Bill Hinman emails come out, cryptocurrency will never be the same. It will never be a wild, wild west anymore. We're going to have legislation and we're going to have executive orders to make sure that the digital asset space in the United States continues to blossom. But then again, you're looking at the Amazon of crypto. I tell everyone all the time, especially in the United States, man, there is no cryptocurrency without Ripple. I'm telling you, none at all. Big Brad Garling House. David Swartz, Ashish Berla, Stuart Alderati, the whole Ripple team, you know, there is no cryptocurrency inside of the United States and the Amazon of crypto is going to be in Thailand, Bangkok on Wednesday for the TRM Labs, their partner with their policy summit, where they're going to be bringing together in industry stakeholders to examine the importance of regulatory clarity and fostering in growth and innovation for the digital ecosystem, digital asset ecosystem inside of Thailand. We understand that Ripple is in America doing this thing. Ripple is in the United Arab Emirates doing this thing. Ripple is in Singapore, Thailand, the European Union. We're going to be talking about the United Nation has given the green light to Ripple and XRP later on in the show as well. Same thing as JP Morgan. This is the reason why we continue to say that XRP is the greatest digital asset ever created without a doubt. When you look at the cryptocurrency market, if you go on coin market cap or whatever it is, coin gecko that you look at the markets, fiat leak, right? And you see the list of all of these digital assets, 20 to 25,000, maybe 30,000, who knows, right? Only maybe about a hundred of them actually have real trading um, activity and is actually being traded um, real live. A lot of it is just wash trading. But again, about 80% of these digital assets are built on top of Ethereum. And that's very important to realize and that's very important to understand as Ethereum it was essentially phase one in adopting cryptocurrency around the world. Now, we understand about the disguised wells and working with the SEC, Joseph Leuven, Big Tyler Buden, the... Ethereum Foundation, the only ones to be able to successfully come in and talk to Mr. Burns. But that's not what we're talking about here. What's in store for the future is a lot of these digital asset companies and a lot of these digital asset projects and these coders that were building on top of the ERC-20 blockchain, they're moving over to the greatest blockchain ever created, which is the XRP ledger. Okay. And moving into it into a scaling phase, they're going to be hiring further, moving forward with all these digital asset companies and these currencies that are on the ERC-20 blockchain. A lot of them are going to be moving over to the XRP ledger. And why is that important? It's important because it's establishing right now what digital assets, what companies, what blockchains are going to be adopted for the 30 or 40 protocols that's going to come together and make it interoperable to build out the Internet of Value. Just like what the Internet of Information did in, in, in the dot com bubbles. Let's go back and look at that. And all of these companies that, you know, had megalithic pumps, 30,000 percent, 20,000 percent. Hell, 90 percent, 95 percent of those companies, they're not even around today. This was phase one or wave one 
to where that a lot of these startups, you know, Coinbase and Crack and BlockFi and Gemini and all of these companies were coming in to wave one to bring in digital assets to the mainstream. Now what we are seeing is institutional trillions of dollars in liquidity coming into this brand new digital asset space right now. And with these big companies and how the market does and what they use, the media machine, they use the propaganda, they use the movies, they use the news stations, they use the Twitter accounts. All they did at first was just shoot crypto down. Remember the um, you know, the Mal Gox narratives, remember the Bitcoin is a scam narrative, you know, uh, money laundering, different things of this nature. Check out what I'm showing you right here on your screen. This is what the big and competent players do. They bring down these digital assets or essentially whatever market that they want to go into. They talk it down in the media. They talk it down in the press. They make sure that they make everyone not believe in these assets. Check this out. Now, we all know that Larry Fink which is the CEO of BlackRock. We all know how he is an avid adopter and has full knowledge of cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Hell, he's been advocating the tokenization of all assets. We're talking about the derivatives market. We're talking about FX and swap markets. We're talking about the stock markets as well. Government bonds, treasury bonds, okay? All of the notes, federal notes, treasury notes, right? Larry Fink is on live. I've shown him plenty of times on this channel calling out for the tokenization of all assets. But check out what he was saying about Bitcoin in 2017. This is October 13th, 2017. Bitcoin, BlackRock, Larry Fink, CEO, calls Bitcoin the index of money laundering. Five years ago, six years ago, Bitcoin is trash. Digital assets, these are not, these are not good. They're just used for money laundering. They're just used for scams. Let's fast forward to June 15th, 2008, 2023, as we have BlackRock files for a spot ETF Bitcoin with Coinbase as a crypto custodian. Oh my goodness. 2023 is the year of the digital asset. How many times do I have to tell it on this channel? How many times do I have to say it to get the masses and the people to believe? In 2017, BlackRock is the largest asset company in the world, holding on their books in the world. We're right behind Vanguard, essentially, right? In 2017, they were calling Bitcoin an index of money laundering. Six years later, now they are applying for a spot ETF on Bitcoin. Let's not get carried away with these narratives. It's not about what they're saying. It's about what they're doing. This is the reason why I come on this show day in and day out to bring the perspectives, the digital perspectives, especially about the greatest digital asset XRP. So the people that's watching can have another view of how they're seeing these assets. Now, we got Hester Purse right here on your screen. She was crypto mom at one point of time. Everybody in the XRP community kind of liked her a little bit because she was the polar opposite, at least as it seems, when she makes her public appearances on these, you know, multimedia conglomerate platforms, right? But she was always a total opposite of Gary Gensler, Mr. Burns. And then she kind of just got quiet. And then she started to speak like Mr. Burns. And then here she is again talking about Mr. Burns again, the commissioner. This is just very this is just very odd. And I think that we are seeing the meltdown of these government agencies that we have entrusted in for all of these years that were put in place to regulate the old financial system. We're seeing them going back and forth live on air, and it's not looking good for these governmental agencies. Congress is going to need to step in and provide clarity to the market right now. Having a, a five member commission, which is politically balanced, is that you have more consistency over time so that you don't have rules that change that swing dramatically. Right. You have rules that are more consistent over time. But that doesn't mean that when a new chairman comes in, the new chairman doesn't bring his own thoughts about things and. We've seen with this commission that, and this is outside the crypto space, but there were rules that we had adopted under the prior chairman that ha have gotten reversed under this one. So there certainly can be change over time. 
But you also have to look at, at change in, in the environment in which we're regulating. And everyone knows that 2022, for example, was not a great year for crypto. A lot of things happened. And I think it, it affects the way all of us think about crypto. So I can't speak for Chair Gensler, what, whether his views align with, with Chair Clayton. All I can say is that I've been at the agency for over five years. And it's very frustrating to me that in that time, we haven't done something more productive. And when you think about that, this is an SEC commissioner, again, speaking out. You know, she's been going really back and forth. But I truly believe that she understands as being a commissioner for five years of the SEC, being under the regime of Jay Clayton and Mr. Burns, which are both responsible for the deliberate confusion inside of this crypto space she knows exactly what's going on but again family i want to go back to this slide so i can show the people exactly what's going on in this digital asset space and how crypto is here to stay it's not going anywhere blockchain is here to stay if you have the biggest asset company in the united states calling for digital assets calling for blockchain adoption applying in and filing an s1 with the securities and exchange commission for a bitcoin etf with coinbase who is in a lawsuit with the sec as their custodian this is how you know that digital assets are not going anywhere especially in the united states we're about to get legislation you need to hold on to those bags and this is a big one right here this is blackrock okay saying that crypto is here to stay they're applying an s1 to get a b to get a Bitcoin ETF essentially. But now check this out. This is huge news. This is from JP Morgan, okay? One of the biggest institutional players in this finance space, cross-border payments, micro payments, it doesn't matter in blockchain. JP and Morgan. This is what they're saying about the greatest digital asset ever created. Check this out. If the company Ripple, this is what JP Morgan is saying. If the company Ripple is able to win the SEC lawsuit and trading resumes on major cryptocurrency exchanges like Coinbase XRP is poised for significant adoption. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> make sure you hit that like button. Absolutely. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm going to read this again. This is from JP Morgan. If Ripple is able to win their lawsuit against the SEC and resume trading on major cryptocurrency exchanges like Coinbase, XRP is poised for significant adoption. Brad Garlinghouse told us that once this case is over and they're able to resume and they're able to go forth with all of their products leveraging XRP, you don't have to understand or have a, have a master's or degree from Harvard or one of these skull and bones Ivy League schools. When you have a high demand and the supply is down, you understand exactly what's going to happen to the value of those assets. Cryptocurrency is here to stay. It's not going anywhere, family. It doesn't matter how many FUD or how much FUD that we see in the United States. Everywhere around the world is adopting cryptocurrency as Hong Kong. They announced that they want HSBC, one of the biggest banks that they have, Stan Chart, and the Bank of China to open up its doors to crypto clients. Oh my goodness. You know, people are essentially shaking in their boots in America because it's just so much drama, right? On the front end. But I'm showing you these things on the back end. Everyone, banking regulators are passing laws adopting cryptocurrency because essentially we need this technology the financial system that we have been using was created in the 70s 1930s when you're thinking about creation 1913 with the creation of the federal reserve regime right we need a facelift the legacy payment system is trash Fractional reserve banking has resulted in $32 trillion in debt in the United States, in the world, essentially. Cryptocurrency is here to stay, ladies and gentlemen, and it is not going anywhere. And I'm going to close off today's show with one of the biggest announcements that I found. Not just BlackRock, 
not just China, not just Japan, not just the European nations, but we have the United Nations, the UN, requests for proposal of implementations of interoperable payment solutions. And you know who they mentioned, family. They mentioned the Amazon of crypto. Let me go ahead and check this out. This is an article from the United Nations implementing Faster Payments Task Force implementing blockchain technology for quick payments for interoperable payment solutions. And you know that they mentioned Ripple family. Of course, I tell everyone Ripple is the Amazon of crypto. Let's go ahead and read this right here, family. It says, look, from experience of different countries, especially those that are FSPs, have integrated with global payment networks and international hubs such as Ripple and TerraPay. Now, we know that TerraPay is a partner of Ripple. We know that MS, MFS Africa is working with Ripple to provide a cost analysis tool allowing governments to assess the cost implications of domestic interoperability or regional operability interoperability solutions. This is the moment that we've been waiting for, family. If you have another opportunity, this is not financial advice. and I'm not a financial advisor. Of course, these are just my digital perspectives. But the UN is calling for Ripple. JP Morgan has given the green light to XRP. BlockFi, or essentially BlackRock has appointed a S1 to apply for a Bitcoin ETF. Cryptocurrency is going to explode in June. Now recognize myself for five minutes. I'd like to start by uh, to read a question from a comment letter that Prometheum sent in response to the SEC's December 2020 special purpose broker dealer framework. Quote, the definition of a digital asset security as used in the proposal is a digital asset that meets the definition of a security under the federal securities laws. This definition puts a burden on the industry to determine which digital assets are securities. As a result, we believe the cl clarity is needed to understand the regulatory framework they must comply with, end quote. That was in a letter dated April 26 from Prometheum uh, specifically signed by Benjamin S. Kaplan, co-CEO of the company. I offer this into the record without objection. This concern, which Prometheum themselves raised in 2020, probably sounds familiar for those who track this committee closely. It is the exact same concern we've heard from witnesses in front of this committee before. How can a broker-dealer register if they don't know which assets are a security and which are not? Further, it makes the same argument that other firms have made that the lack of clarity from the SEC puts an undue burden on the industry. Mr. Kaplan, in your testimony, you were very confident that no new legislation is needed in the digital asset space to clarify this question. What has changed between the date of this letter in 2021 and when your firm called for clarity and now? What has changed? Over the two plus years since that time, there's been additional enforcement actions and statement by the SECs, which have clarified any questions that we had in regards to the uh, designation of a digital asset as a security. Mr. Kaplan, Prometheum's website says that Prometheum ATS supports, quote, many tokens that mostly trade on crypto exchanges, end quote. I'd like to dig in on that just a little bit. Can Prometheum customers trade in Ether? If your answer is yes, Please explain how. Not currently. Can Prometheum customers trade in Bitcoin? If your answer is yes, please explain how. No. Just for the audience at home's benefit, Ether and Bitcoin make up more than 60% of the digital asset market. Mr. Kaplan, given that either Ether and Bitcoin make up more than 60% of the digital asset market, if the current system is working, why can't your customers trade the most popular and widely used digital assets? Regulation and new ATSs and custodians uh, should take a crawl, walk, run approach. And essentially, uh, they will proceed to add additional assets and abilities as time goes on. I'd like to point out when the... Uh, I'm going to reclaim my time. 
Mr. Kaplan, did Prometheum receive any additional exemptive relief from the SEC that has not been publicly shared? No. Thank you, Mr. Kaplan. Prometheum's special purpose broker-dealer license does not address the core issue. There is not a consistent definition of a digital asset security within current law. This point was made obvious when Chair Ginsler could not say definitively whether Ether is a digital asset security when asked by Chairman McHenry in this very room a couple months ago. In other words, that same question that Prometheum themselves raised in their 2021 comment letter is still unanswered. That's why legislation is needed. That's the problem that the chairman's bill works to solve. To testify in front of our committee that your company's charter, which only allows for trading in a very so small subset of assets, is evidence that no legislation is needed just doesn't make sense. If anything, the fact that Prometheum's customers cannot trade some of the most popular digital assets is an illustration of the broader problem, Mr. Kaplan. I yield back. Thanks for everyone tuning in to today's show. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and turn on those notifications. This is not financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor, but please let everyone know that the high vibe said that the bulls are getting ready to run out the damn gates. Yeah.